Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Well, the Minister of State for Public Procurement, e government, communications, and a circular economy, Oisin Smith, recently published the whole of government circular economy strategy. Following in the steps of our international counterparts, this strategy aims to promote the concept of living more by using less. And Minister Smith joins us now to discuss the strategy and to outline how businesses can play their part. Minister, what is the circular economy all about? Good morning, Carl. Thanks for having me on your show. Okay, well, look, I'll tell you about circular economy. It's a strange phrase. And the idea is just simply to look at waste as a resource rather than something that you throw away or send away to be burnt. So, you know, you'll see nowadays that um, landfill sites often have um, mining going on in them. They have people extracting gas out of them from the, the food that was thrown away years ago and you have people extracting metals from them and so on. So technology has moved on. And rather than looking at waste as some product that you want to get rid of and pay to dispose of, now it's something that um, we, can, we can really recover something valuable from. And it's a different way of looking at, at the economy. So instead of thinking of the economy as, you know, we, we dig things up and we use them, we use them up and dispose of them. Now we're thinking about reuse and making sure that we keep our valuable resources circulating within our economy. And in December last, the government announced its whole of government circular economy strategy. What targets are set by this strategy? And more importantly, what actions will be needed to reach these targets? Well, this is something that government does is say, you know, they make a strategy and then a strategy is no good without having uh, an action plan, a set of a to do list, I suppose, a list of things that have to be done to get to, to reach our strategy. So Ireland doesn't have a very circular economy at the moment. At the moment, we we tend to import uh, a lot of what we use and our waste ends up often being exported or sent for incineration in uh, often in Dublin and in Pool Bag. So we, we're looking at other countries across Europe and we're seeing what is the way that they do these things and you know how can we retain more of our resources with, within our economy. And to give you an example, when we're doing a lot of construction at the moment and a lot of the um, a lot of the stones and pebbles that are used in construction are actually extracted from from drumlins that were dropped down by um, by uh, by glaciers. You know, so it, although we don't have a lot of mining going on in Ireland, you know, we don't have uh, we don't have things like coal mining. We do have what's basically strip mining of building materials, and then a lot of those building materials eventually uh, are not being reused when they're demolished. Now we're going into a period of a lot of construction for the next ten years. So we have this housing for all strategy trying to build nearly a third of a million homes in the next 10 years. And that's necessarily going to involve a lot of demolition and a lot of construction waste. Um, we want to make sure that those uh, that the waste from the, that those activities are reused and that we have a kind of, um, that we're as good as any other country uh, in Europe that in, in the way that we retain our resources within, within our society. And we need to do this as well. It links in with our climate targets. When you have, um, when you have a way of working that involves producing a lot of waste, uh, you, you, you tend to have higher emissions as a result. So in order to reach our 50% cut in emissions by 2030, uh, we need to make our economy more circular. And Minister, in developing this strategy, did government draw inspiration from successful strategies that had been implemented by other international counterparts? Oh, yeah. So look, it, it, I think that um, Ireland certainly, you know, best in the world for some things, but, but this wasn't something we're best in the world for. And often like, when we're trying to catch up it, it certainly makes sense to go off and ask another country for advice on, on what they're doing. Uh, in the area of, um, in this area of circular economy, uh, countries like the Netherlands are are, um, have, have, are are really leading the way. So we we would have looked to we would have looked to all European countries, found the ones who were doing best, looked at their strategies, asked them what works. It's a bit different from business because in business you can't really turn to your competitors and ask them, you know, what works for you and what's best because they're trade secrets. But with countries, the, the officials are generally very happy to, to tell their life story and talk about their successes. It's something people love to do, is tell you the story about how they succeeded and what they tried and what failed. So it completely makes sense to do that. And in this era of Zoom meetings, you don't have to go on junkets around the world to, to meet people. You can sum, sum it up to your computer, have a meeting with them, discuss it. And we definitely took best practice in, in all these areas. So with that in mind, we're bringing in a new a piece of legislation, a new circular economy bill is coming into the Doyle in the next couple of weeks. And um, that's going to provide 
a number of, uh, I suppose it's, it, it's, a, it's a tool bag of different things that will enable us to, uh, to have a more circular economy. And while this strategy is solely focused on government, is it hoped that the adoption will be replicated by the business community? Definitely, certainly. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunities here for, uh, for businesses to, um, to get away from producing as much waste as they do and to have a more, like, you know, one of, the, one of the focuses for any business on their bottom line is to be more efficient. And in the world at the moment, uh, everything is moving towards lower energy use and having a more green operation. And the, the, the rules and strategies, not just in Ireland, but across Europe, are aligning in that direction. And if your organization is one that's dependent on very heavy energy use, that produces a lot of waste, it's going to be difficult for you to survive in future. So really, it, it, business does have its part to play, and government has its part to play in helping business, giving them the information uh, and the knowledge to be able to, ch- to, to, be able to, to change towards being long-term sustainable green businesses that will, that will survive in, the, in, the, in, a, in a future where emissions have been cut uh, by 50%. So there absolutely, there absolutely is a role for business in this. And to, to help with that, um, the government last year produced uh, something called the Climate Toolkit for Business. So if you, it's on the gov.ie website. If you, if you search for gla- Climate Toolkit for Business, um, what you can do is you go in and you tell it about your business. And it doesn't matter if your business is one or two people in a shop or if it's 50 people or, or 1,000 people. You just go in there and you fill in a survey and tell us what your electricity bills are and how much water you use and how much gas you use and how many flights you take. And it will come back to you and it will, it will give you a prescription for what you need to do to make your business more green. It will come to you with a sort of a personalized action plan for your business because it's very hard to know where to start. You know, you're running a business you know you want it to you, you want it, you want it to succeed in future. You don't want it to be left short uh, that the tide's going to go out and that you can't survive in a in a, in a future world with di- with different green rules. So this is a this is a place that can help you to find a place to start. It will give you a, a plan of action. It will tell you where, what to do. So that's my suggestion for any of your listeners is to go to the Climate Toolkit for Business and uh, you it, it will it will come up with a special plan for you and give and give you a place to start from. And Minister, on the topic of retrofitting and energy efficiency, we were joined on the programme recently by Kieran Byrne, the Director of the National Retrofit Programme with SEAI. And he was joining us to tell us all about the new National Retrofit Programme with an €8 billion Euro investment to retrofit up to 500,000 houses between now and 2030. But apart from properties themselves on the residential side, what supports are going to be made available to corporate or commercial or business properties in terms of retrofitting? You're right. That, that announcement recently is all about uh, residential retrofit. And it, it, the big change in it, it's a dramatic announcement, the big change is that you can get 80% for, uh, for a shallow retrofit. So if you want to just do, for example, your attic and your walls, you can get um, 80% of the money. So you spend 500 euros and you'll be making 300 euros back every year. So that's, that is focused on, uh, on residential. But there is an entire suite as well aimed at business. And if you go to seai.ie to their website and have a look, you'll see, um, you'll see plans and grants and advice. And a lot of it, a, a lot, it really does require advice in many cases when you're going beyond a couple of hundred euros. You, you, you need somebody to come out and, and, and advise you on where is the best place to spend money. You know, is it the LED lights? Is, is that the first place to start? Or what, what is the first place to start? And what are the things that will give you the best return on investment? But the SAI has a whole section devoted to business. Um, so it's not just for residential. That was, that was last week's announcement. But there is a whole, uh, a whole area for business. And I would, I would encourage people to ask the SAI, SAI for their advice, but also to get in. Um, to, to, to get make sure that they, they're pointed in the right direction of a professional who will survey them because whatever they pay to have somebody come around and look around, they, they'll, they'll make the money back. It's something, it, it's something that pays for itself. You know, that, that the, there's always low-hanging fruit. There's always something you can do that makes its money back very quickly. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's just a very, very good thing to do. And, you know, whether it's, whether it's changing your lighting or changing your insulation or changing your water use, I think um, businesses, it's a sensible thing for any business to do at this stage. And, and the, the business case for doing it has become stronger with the, with the increase in energy prices. So as, as the price of electricity has gone up and the price of gas has come up, has gone up, the, getting that cost benefit is much easier to reach at this stage. 
And what are the criticisms regarding the retrofit schemes, both on the commercial side and also on the residential side, is that apart from the grant, there will still be an investment to be made in relation to paying for these retrofits. And there was welcome news this week in that regard with the announcement of a new fund designed to improve the energy efficiency of infrastructure, such as commercial buildings and homes, which has received an investment of €20 million Euros from the Ireland Strategic Investment Fund. Yeah. So, look, I mean, you're saying that, that there is... Um you're saying that there's criticism that it's not entirely free and that you have to put down some of your own money. You know, what I'd say about that is that the majority of the money that's being provided, 58% of it is going on free schemes aimed at people in energy poverty. And that's right. It has to be targeted at people who are living in very cold homes and living on welfare payments and living in local authority housing as tenants. But a large quantity of private capital is going into renovation and is going into business investment at this stage. So we know last year that Irish people spent 11.5 billion euros renovating their homes. And in many cases, they would have been putting in a new kitchen, a new bathroom, converting a garage, whatever. But out of that 11 billion, 11.5 billion that was spent last year, if even 300 million of it went in private investment in retrofitting, I would be happy. So, you know, I would like to see when people are carrying out home renovations in 2022 and 2023, that they take a portion of their budget and say, well, while I'm doing this, while I'm doing the new kitchens or the new bathroom, I'll, put, I'll do some retrofit as well and I'll get the grants. And the grants are good. They're much higher than they were before. Um, you know, often it's, it's, it's euro for euro match. So you put in 10,000, you get 10,000. And they can cover solar panels, they can cover ventilation, cover heat pump, cover insulation, um, all the things you might want to do to give yourself a higher quality house. And then you get a return on your investment because having a good BER rating um, increases the value of your property, whether it's commercial or whether it's domestic. And sustainability forms an integral part of ESG. And ESG is certainly an area which investors are critically evaluating in their decision-making processes in recent years. Yeah, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Look, with, with ESG, I think that it, this has an effect on share price. If you're if you're if you are describing what your business does, or you're making a you're making a prospectus for your business, you're offering shares in your business, or you're trying to sell it, and some uh, an investor examines it and says, well, is this a business which has a lasting quality? Has it got has it got has it in other words has it got sustainability? Is it a business that's going to last in the future with the increasing price of fuel, with the changing regulation and laws about carbon, with the changes that are coming down from Europe or from WTO? And if your if your business is aligned for a strong future in a strong green future, your share price will be higher. Uh, and if you know, and if it's not, then it's going to be lower. And that, that is reflected in the fact that the ESG investment funds um, have outperformed the market. Uh, that you know, companies that, that take a long-term view on their um, on their value uh, in terms of their sustainability are worth more. So that really is the that is the major uh, incentive for businesses to, or the, the major rational incentive, apart from it's good for the environment, is that it is good for the value of your business to do this. And if you if you, if you don't take that approach, uh, um, it, your, your business will be worth less overall. So really, that's that that's the that is the overriding market logic at the moment, and um, and, and that that's 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 not coming from me as, as a member of the Green Party. You'll read that if you open the financial times. Under your brief as Minister, you're also responsible for public procurement. Now, to give a sense of the Irish position, in 2019, the Irish government spent €12 billion on public contracts for goods and services. I'd like you to take this opportunity this morning to reach out to the business community to encourage them to get involved in tendering for government contracts as they come up over the coming years. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. The Irish government is a major purchaser of goods and services and I, I want to be sure that Irish companies are bidding for those contracts and winning those contracts, and that small companies are. Now, of that €12 billion Euros that you mentioned that was spent in 2019, and it's higher now, a majority of that money went to small and medium enterprises. And also most of that money went to, the vast majority went to Irish companies as well. So sometimes companies look at this and feel that they are um, locked out or that the, that the process is difficult or unfair, and what I want to say to you is that it is possible to win these contracts and that Irish, small Irish companies are winning them all the time. I meet uh, very regularly with um, ISME uh, and with IBEC and uh, with the Small Firms Association, with other representatives of small businesses, and I ask them all the time, what do you want me to change in the rules on public procurement so that Irish small companies can win contracts? 
Uh, and that's really, that's, that, that's my focus. And so for anyone who, who, who wants to take part, I would urge you to contact your representative organisation or contact my department uh, if you're having difficulty winning, winning a contract. But you really can do it. And the rules have been set up to help small companies to win. Sometimes if you're really, really small, you need to go into, into alliance with another company. Um, so sometimes it can be done as a joint venture. But really, um, it, it, it is a, the public procurement is there to get value for money from the state. We have to be fair to every, every company that applies. We have to leave it open to everybody. And under European law, we have to allow European companies to bid for tenders. But in practice, the smaller tenders, they, they, we don't get foreign bidders for them. They tend to go to Irish companies uh, and they tend to go to small and medium enterprises. So I would encourage um, I would encourage Irish companies always to bid for for contracts from the government. And Minister, of course, those smaller companies that you're talking about here, they have the opportunity to enter into consortiums if they're bidding for larger contracts. And one of the other things I think as well that's often missing from a business owner's perspective is there is an opportunity to get feedback if they're unsuccessful in relation to a particular tender that they've submitted. Yeah, you're 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 right. So you, the first thing is that you can go into a joint venture with somebody if you have. Um, if you have a particular skill, but you don't have the the uh, you you don't have all all the things that are on the tender that are required, um, you can join in with another with another company if you want. Um, even if you've never won a contract in the past, that won't be that won't be held against you. If you don't w- manage to win a contract, you can ask why, and you can go through and see and, and learn for the next time. And I've asked um, the public sector companies that are putting out contracts to divide them into lots. So that into smaller lots, so that they're not going out as one huge contract, you know. So that, and that's so that there's more chance for for smaller companies to win win the contracts. So that that's something I've done, and I've been working with organisations like the HSC, which is probably the largest purchaser uh, in the country, and I've spoken to their uh, procurement leads to make sure that that they are they're taking that approach as well. Well, that was the Minister of State for Public Procurement, E-Government, Communications and a Circular Economy, Oshin Smith, and I'd like to thank the Minister for joining us on this morning show. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.